Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another Lick of the Week. In today's lesson, I'm going to be breaking down a lick that really shows how you can mix together major and minor pentatonic scales to get a much more professional bluesy sound. I got all the tabs available for you as usual at patreon.com slash swiftlessons, where if you support the channel for just a dollar a month, you can gain access to a ton of extra resources. Now, let's get started with your lesson. One, two, three, four. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started learning the scales that we're going to be using to put this very classy blues lick together. The first one that we need to learn is the C minor pentatonic scale. For many of you, this is probably going to be a review. Sounds like this, and you can use your tab at patreon.com slash swiftlessons to follow along. So your minor uh, pentatonic scale in C. Okay, now the scale that we're going to be mixing that with is the uh, the D position of the C major pentatonic scale. I am a huge advocate uh, for mixing major and minor scales together when you're jamming over top of uh, major blues progressions. Okay, so that scale is going to look like this. Okay, and one more scale we're going to learn is the C major scale in common position. That one looks like this. Okay, that's a scale that every guitar player has absolutely got to know. Okay, fantastic. Now that you have the source scales down, the next step for us is to learn the chord progression that I was jamming over top of. Okay, so this is a standard 1-4-5 blues progression in the key of C, but this is a slight variation to the typical kind of standard blues that you might see, a 12 bar. Uh, this is a slow blues version of that, okay, something similar to what you might hear in Stormy Monday. So the chords that we're going to need, a C9 chord, okay, I got my thumb wrapped around to the 8th fret, low E string. And then my uh, pointer finger is on the 7th fret A, ring finger, 8th fret D, middle finger, 7th fret G, and my pinky is on the uh, B string, 8th fret, okay? All right, some of the more advanced players out there might recognize this little shape as being E minor 7 flat 5, okay? If you take that chord, put a C in the bass, it's a C9 chord, okay? And um, the thumb is basically optional too. If you have a bass player jamming along with you, might as well just hit those uh, notes that are on the A string through the B string. Okay, the next chord we have is an F9 chord. This is your four chord, right? Everything's in reference to that major scale, the four chord. So, eighth fret of the A string, Middle finger, pointer finger is on the seventh fret of the D, and then look at this, my ring finger is draped over the G, B, and high E strings. Okay, so that's the four chord. Now, the techniques that you have on the four chord can be used for the five chord. Bring it up a whole step. Okay, and this is a G9 chord. So, there's your one, four, five, C9. Oftentimes you'll see players going up or down a half step for a little bit of tension. All right, that F9 chord. And of course, if you bring it up, G9. 
Now, let's get the progression down. You're gonna need four beats on the C9. One, two, three, four. F9 for four, three, four, and then you're back to the C9 chord for eight beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to the F9 for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're right back to the C9 for eight beats. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then the G9 chord comes in for four. Two, three, four, then the F9 for four. Two, three, four, and then the turnaround. Two beats of C9, one, two, F9, one, two, C9, one, two, and then we're G, one, two, to start the entire thing over again. A slow blues in the key of C. Okay, fantastic, you have your source scales down, you've memorized how to play a slow blues progression in the key of C. Uh, now we're going to get into the lick of the week. One more time, it sounds like this. A little bit slower. Okay. So basically what's happening there is I'm taking the high E string, uh, eighth fret, I'm gonna bar that, and I'm gonna hit some dead notes along with that B string, eighth fret, and that high E string, eighth fret, staccato. Look at my middle finger here. Getting a little bit extra pop by pulling on the string real hard. And then I'm gonna loosen up the pressure so that way the note shortens. All right, next, we're gonna go 11, eight on the B string. Then we're gonna go to the uh, 10th fret of the G string. And here I'm gonna do an eight to nine hammer. Mixing together the minor and the major. All right, so far we have. For that B string, you can use your pinky or your ring finger, okay? Depends on what style of player you are. For more jazz, you might use the pinky. For more blues, doing lots of bends, you might want to use the ring finger. Then I'm on the 10th fret of the D string, and my middle finger crosses over to go to the 10th fret of the A string. So far we have. Then we're gonna go to the eighth fret of the D string, the dominant seven for a funky effect. All right, that right there is worth the price of admission. Great sound and lick, but we're gonna add in one more element. A little slide up into the major pentatonic scale in D position. Okay, so how'd I do that? 10th fret, A string, sliding up to the 12th fret. Then we're gonna resolve on the C note on the D string 10th fret. That's the entire lick. Really cool, very stylish, very smooth. Sometimes you might see me throwing an extra phrase there. 12 on the uh, A string, 10 on the D string, back to 12. And then I love grabbing the um, 13th fret of the D string, just as something extra for you. Bending, putting my pick back on the string, and resolving back on that A. Very BB King, very cool. Okay, now experiment with putting in some pull offs in there. specifically on that B string to make it flow a bit more. Okay, great, now you have the lick down. If you're a beginner player, you might need to break this up into several different parts, practice each of them over and over again, then join them together. If you're starting to get the lick down, start to think about whether or not it comes in on an upbeat or a downbeat, okay? And it might be able to come in in a variety of different places throughout a measure. But the way I constructed it is I came in right as the one beat was coming in. A one, two, three, four.
All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out today's Lick of the Week. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. I hope you're enjoying the tabs, ebooks, and all the other resources. I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.